Hey, in this video, we're going to be going over routing in SvelteKit. It'll help to know a little bit of SvelteKit syntax ahead of time, but you can check out my Svelte introduction videos first as well. To start off, I'm using Visual Studio Code with the Svelte extension installed. I also have already created a new minimal project using Svelte's npx sv create command. Files in the routes folder of your SvelteKit app make up the URL paths of your site. So slash routes is the root of your site and a login folder in routes would be a login page in the browser's URL. The most common file you'll see in these routes are plus page dot svelte files, which are svelte components. These contain the HTML that'll generate your page. In order to make your page more dynamic than just static HTML and JavaScript, we can receive data when the page loads using the svelte 5 props room and the data property. You can get access to it with a line of code like this. This data would typically be from a database perhaps, or the result of an API call on the server side, or it could be the response from submitting a form. All of these we'll see in an example by the end. The code that sends your page data through the props room can either be a plus page.ts or plus page.server.ts file in the same route as the page you want data sent. So if you need to send data in the root of your site, you create one of those in the root. And if you need to send data in the login page, you'd create that file in the login folder. The difference between them is whether or not it needs to access server-side data, like a database or maybe private environmental variables. If so, you need the .server version. Also, the file can either be .js or .ts, depending on if you're using TypeScript or not. In that file, one way we can send data to your page is by using a load function. So say we wanted to send a list of shipping options you can pick from in a drop-down box. We'd have our pretend database query function return an array that might look something like this. And then we'll send it back. Then on the HTML component side, we can loop through the options in a select tag using data.shipping options. And output an option tag and insert the value right there. Our folders in the routes directory can also contain a plus layout.svelte file as well. This is a file whose contents get applied to the current directory and any child directories as well. So you can typically use it to have a header, navigation, and footer on every page of your site, for example. And if we visit our login route, it also contains the same header and footer wording now. The basic layout page has to at least have this code where it takes the children from the props room and renders it, the children being the content of our page.svelte files. You can also put these layout files in a subfolder and have it apply HTML and styles to only files within that folder and its subfolders. So here's an example of our login layout with extra words that will not be on the home page. But if we add our header and footer words to the root layout, you'll see that that will get added to the login one as well, in addition to the login specific layout. And just like page.svelte files, you can load data into a layout file as well using plus layout.ts and plus layout.server.ts. This would load the data on every page and subpages where the layout file is located. Because of this, it's typically used to load something like the logged in user's data on every page, as we might want an avatar with their initials in the navigation bar or something like that. So here we can return a user in the load function, add data to our layout props, and output the user's name wherever we want. And as you can see, it'll be on every page and subpage now. But next, let's go over one more neat thing that Svelte calls advanced routing, but I actually use it in almost every app. You can group routes together in order to share a layout file, for example, using a folder with the name wrapped in parentheses, like this one. This folder won't actually be a URL someone can visit in your site, it's just used for grouping. And what I use it for is to have a different site design in the layout for my app for when someone is not logged in, and those would include the login page, maybe the sign up page, forgot password page, and so on. On those pages, you wouldn't want to display your full navigation bar with links they can't even get to yet. And you can't show an avatar or a logged out link either, obviously. So I made a much more simple layout for those pages and put them in a external group like this 
and everything that is behind a login is in the app group. Then I stick my layout files right under the group and they do their thing with any sub pages. The folder structure ends up looking something like this. And now all three of these folders will share this external only layout file. Let's go ahead and do everything we talked about so far to make a practical real world example of an app with a login page and then a main screen after a login. And then we'll dive deeper into what you can do with routing. I'm going to start with our external group that we already created and in there a login route, a sign up route, and a forgot route. Then we also already have an app group and in there let's make a page.svelte file that'll be the main page after logging in. Then add an account route to display the logged in user's account history perhaps. Our main route page.svelte file needs to be deleted now. The app folder isn't really a route, so this page.svelte file now in our app folder is now the root of our site. And as you can see, if we attempt to add it back, we do get an error. In the app group and the external group, let's make the bare minimum layout svelte file with the render children code so we can clean up our main one and copy it into apps and then clean up the external one. And then we can delete the one in the root. And in the app group, let's also move our layout.server.ts file to load the user's info. The external page won't have anything to load, so we don't need a server file there. In our load function, we're going to pretend we're querying a database by sending in the logged in user's ID and getting back an object that has their ID, first name, and last name. If you'd like to know how to set up a real login in your app, I do have lots of how-to videos on that as well, so check them out. And then on the layout.svelte file, we already have the props room to grab the data. And we can create a navigation bar with an avatar on the end that'll show their initials. And we'll also add a link to our profile page, the account page, I mean. And we'll create that in a little bit. And we'll also add a logo to the left. On the account routes page felt file, we can just make some HTML that outputs a welcome message with their name and a placeholder for their order history. Since our main layout script file already loads the user's info, we do have access to it here with the data object in the props room. Now let's work on the login. In the login route in the page.svelte file, let's make a simple HTML form with a username and password input. The page looks a little odd, so let's style our external pages to be in a centered box. And we can do that in the layout file in the external group. A little better, but hopefully you get the idea of having different layouts and groups. Now this look will apply to the sign up and the forgot password pages as well if we were to make those. Now to receive a form submission, we make a page.server.ts file in the same folder, the login route. In here, we create an exported actions object and an inside a function called default. In this function, we would do the work of actually checking the form data and logging the user in in a real app. You can read the submitted form data by adding the request parameter to the function and then calling dot form data on that object. And that resulting variable contains all the submitted form data. So you, then you need to call the dot get function for each input in your form like this. And in the end, your function needs to return an action result, which can be data in an object or a redirect or even an error. We'll return a redirect because if they log in successfully, they would just get sent to the home page anyways. When you submit the form data, by default, the page will be rendered again and your load function will be called if you have any. You can access the response, the script sent back, if any, by adding form to the props rune on top of your page.svelte files. And then you can optionally check if it was successful or had an error and show a message using an if block. You can return errors to the user from your scripts file by returning a, the built-in fail function. This wants a status code and then an object containing any data you want sent back and I typically just send back a message like this. Then we can just look for that message in the form back on the page. The redirect we did though will work automatically with nothing needed on this end. 
You can also add an action to your form called Use Enhance. This will do everything we talked about already, but the page won't physically reload, which might be a better experience for the user. Now let's move on to API routes. You can have your own API endpoints in your Svelte app fairly easily. The path to your endpoint can be anywhere in your route, but I usually make an API folder and put them in there. Then under our new API folder, we can create a cart folder, which will be the pretend endpoint for getting or changing your shopping cart on your app. In API routes, you just make a plus server.ts or JS file and then export functions for the HTTP method you want to accept. So for example, your cart API will return the cart. You can export a get function like this. You do the work of getting their cart from a database most likely, and then return the contents of the cart in JSON format. And SvelteKit has a JSON function to easily do that. Similarly, if this same endpoint will handle adding things to the cart, you can also export a post function in here and do the same. And same with the delete endpoint to remove things from the cart and so on. To call your API endpoint in Svelte, you just use the native fetch function and provide the path. So in our main page, we can pretend we're gonna get the cart. We can add an on mount function, and this is built in and runs when components first get loaded. And in here, we can make our fetch function. And for get requests, this is all you need. Then you add this line to convert the JSON response to a JavaScript object. For other HTTP methods, you just add another parameter to the fetch function, which will just be an object with certain options. And in here is a method option. And you can set the method to post or delete or put or whatever you need. If you need to send data to the API endpoint, you can put it in the body of the request and make it a JSON string like this. And then to receive that data back on our post method, we add the request parameter to our post function, and then we can read request.json to convert the JSON body to an object again. And I think that's about it for basic routing and SvelteKit for this video. You can combine the things I've talked about here to make a pretty complex app if you wanted but I'll also have a video that goes over some advanced things as I think of them. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments, and thanks for watching.